I stand in the midst of a multitude of those from every tribe and tongue. We are your children, redeemed by your blood, rescued from death by your love. There are no words good enough to thank you. There are no words to express my praise. But I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. To the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. stand by grace in your presence. We're cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. We are your children, called by your name. Humbly we bow and we pray. Release your power to work in us and Till we are changed to be more like you. Then all the nations will see your glory revealed and worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on our live stream this Wednesday evening. We're going to start the service off tonight singing Footprints of Jesus first, second, and last verses together. Let's all sing. Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Though they lead o'er the cold, dark mountains, seeking his sheep, or along by Siloam's fountains, helping the weak. Sing with us, footprints of Jesus. That make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where e'er they go. Then as 
at last when on high he sees us, our journey done. We will rest where the steps of Jesus in at his throne. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where there they go. Amen. Welcome to our midweek service tonight. And we're so thankful to have you tuned in this evening. Trust you've had a good day and a good evening thus far. And we're so happy to be uh, worshiping together on this midweek service, although it's remotely. We're excited to be here tonight. And we have Brother Randy Wall with us tonight. And we're excited to hear him preach uh, here in just a few minutes. Uh, Brother Holly was going to take care of the service. Brother Randy was going to be preaching for us. We had all that planned out. We were, we were going to be out of town. And, uh, of course, plans fell through because of the, the virus situation. But I'm, I'm excited to be able to hear Brother Randy. So we kept that and looking forward to that. And uh, didn't Brother Holly do a good job Sunday night? I enjoyed hearing him preach. And, uh, and uh, well, I thank the Lord for a good youth pastor, amen, and someone to fill in and just do a phenomenal job in, every, in everything. And, uh, and so we're, we're grateful to be here tonight and uh, join you. And uh, Brother Holly mentioned about singing along, and um, I, I love to sing out, but I don't know if anybody else likes to hear me sing out because every once in a while, let me change that a little bit, a lot of the times I'm either off-key or say the wrong words, and I know, brother, I'm probably messing you up. But anyway, Mike is so graceful. I did that with him when he was leading the music. And, uh, but, uh, but I love to sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, but, uh, but uh, get a lot of hiccups there. But anyway, good to see you tonight. And uh, let us know that you're watching. Say hello. Uh, be a part of the service, and that's the way we've been doing it. And it uh, works well. I'm able to see who's watching, so it helps me. And encourages us to let us know that you're watching. And so just say, hey, I'm here. Or, or you can say, hey, man, uh, doing the preaching or singing or something like that. If you have a prayer request, you can put that in. Uh, folks have been calling and, and asking for prayer, as we've mentioned that during our services, of course. And, uh, and we're not getting all of it, I know, because it's you know, obviously not like usual. But if you do have a prayer request, you're welcome to call uh, myself, the church office here, or uh, text me, uh, or, or put it on Facebook Live. You're welcome to the comment section. You're welcome to do that as well. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless tonight in the service. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come back together and uh, remotely and, and spend some time in your word tonight. And Father, we're, we're excited to have Brother Wall preaching for us tonight. I'm looking forward to that. I ask that you'd speak to my heart uh, as a believer, speak to our hearts as a church family. Uh, give Brother Walt liberty and fill him with your spirit and the touch of God, wisdom, discernment, and use him, to, again, to speak to our hearts. And, Father, I pray that you would bless the singing as well, the songs that we'll sing together tonight. Bless all those that are listening tonight. Give them a special blessing. I know it's so easy it, it, with the circumstances, Father, to maybe be out in the yard working or, or doing something else uh, when we're not able to be here uh, but, Father, bless, I pray, those especially that are, that are taking the time out to be faithful to the service at 7 o'clock as normal. And I know, that's can't, I know everybody can't do that, and I understand, but I ask that you would bless all of our listeners and those viewing tonight as well. And uh, give us a great, great service tonight. Be with our country. Continue to be with our leaders. Uh, help them to make the right decisions that you would be pleased and honored with. Help our nursing uh, care workers, Father, in the hospitals and places of, of uh, care. I ask that you give them safety and protection, good health and strength. Those in our church that are working uh, in the medical field, that you protect them as well. Law enforcement, so many others. I pray that you be with them. Give us a great service again tonight, and we'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, one of the greatest encouragements is that God does not change in a world full of change. Our lives have been turned upside down, but God doesn't change, and Jesus is the same every day. And to know Jesus is to love him, and every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. So we're going to sing this chorus through tonight just a couple times. Join along with us. I know you know this one, so sing with us tonight. Every day with Jesus 
is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. All right, thank you so much, Brother Holly. And to trust that you're singing along and, uh, and uh, sing out. I know it's maybe just your family, but sing out and uh, let them know, you know, that, that, uh, how good of a singer you are. You know, bunch it out there. Get it out. And I'm just joking a little bit. But anyway, um, I want to go over really quickly just a couple things. Of course, all of our April uh, activities, events have been canceled, of course. And we're, you say, well, what about May? Well, we're just, everybody, the whole country's just playing it by ear right now, so we don't know. We've got a calendar plan, uh, that's for sure, uh, but we're just kind of playing it one, we're just taking one day at a time, and, and you you are too. And so um, everything, far as I know, is May is still long. We're just kind of taking it day by day. So we'll see when we get there. But everything April canceled. Uh, but uh, normally on Wednesday night, uh, is our missions giving. We're still supporting all of our missionaries, same amount. We're not cutting them. Thank the Lord that we don't have to do that. And God is blessed. And so uh, uh, so let's be faithful in our giving. I know that our church family has been faithful in your giving, some online, some uh, at the drive-in, and some are dropping it by, some are mailing it in. And I thank you so much for that. And let's continue to be faithful. The ministry continues. Uh, I'm here. Uh, Brother Holly's here. We're, we're, we're working. We're being faithful. Uh, and so let's be faithful in our giving uh, for the Lord's work and as it continues, and especially in our missions department. Also, uh, our, for our services on Sunday, I want to encourage you to watch online. And we've got now we've got it set up where every single person in our church has the ability uh, to at least listen, if not watch, our service, every service now. And so our, our calling system is working, uh, as far as I know, uh, from what I'm understanding, what I'm hearing. Uh, our call system is working fine, and so everyone is at least able to call in on their phone, even if you don't have Internet, call that 336 number. If you don't have that, if you need that repeated, if you'll call the church office and call my cell phone, we'll get that back to you. But at least you're able to listen to the service, kind of just like a live radio station. And so keep that in mind as well. Then uh, I want you to encourage you to tune in on Sunday, either on your phone uh, or through Facebook, Facebook. You can watch the service. We're also looking at uh, going YouTube live, and so those that have internet but are not comfortable with Facebook uh, can watch on YouTube live, and we do, I will make this announcement, uh, we do have our services uh, are being posted on YouTube. They're not live currently, uh, but you can go back and watch previous services. I think there's maybe two or three on there right now of, of last Sunday, Easter Sunday, but you can go on there and watch those afterwards. If you don't have Facebook, you do have internet, and you want to watch that, you're welcome to do that. Do that, but we're also looking at doing live as well. Uh, so remember that. And then our drive-in service. The plan is to have drive-in. I'll do another call them all Friday or Saturday to remind you of that. And I'm looking forward to that. What a great crowd we had drive-in Sunday. And uh, there was probably close eight, I would say 90, 100 people probably is what we kind of figured up. We didn't count everybody. We count the cars and a lot of them, of course, had families and couples and even singles. But uh, there was a good crowd. And so I thank you for coming to that. And uh, so uh, we're going to continue that as long as we can, and weather permitting. So uh, the, there's a little chance of rain Sunday, so I need you to pray again. Remember, we had that last Wednesday night, we had a 100% chance of rain yeah. on the forecast for Sunday. 
And I know you prayed, and then it, it, God held off the rain until we were done. And we were still on the property maybe 30, 45 minutes after, and then it started drizzling. So I want to thank you for praying, and God answered that, and God allowed that to allow us to do that. So let's pray, pray hard again uh, this Sunday that we'll be able to have that drive in, so at least there's some contact for those that would feel comfortable and uh, able to come. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then, uh, Steve and Laura, we ran out of hot dogs. We were so, we had a good time with that. I didn't get one, and my family, but we, we were well taken care of, but um, we ran out of hot dogs, and Steve and Laura, you guys were so tickled with that, and I, I as a pastor, I love to see our people working, and, and all of the parking attendants and everybody, but anyway, uh, they were so tickled, and they said, Pastor, we're going to do this again next Sunday, so I think, and I'll let you know about what the, what the menu is for, for Saturday, uh, I, somebody, Miss Laura said something about chicken pie. And so we're going to, we're going to, no kidding. I'm not joking around now. Uh, I'm serious. So, and uh, Miss Laura, if I, if I have misinterpreted, then uh, I'll get a phone call, I'm sure. But, uh, but I think that's true. And so we'll let you know for sure. I'll do a column on Saturday and I'll touch base with Steve and Laura. But uh, they're wanting to do another meal to help our church family uh, with that, okay? You got to go eat lunch somewhere. Might as well get something free from church. We're being very careful with that, all right? And so remember all that. All right, one more song tonight, Brother Holly. Come lead us in our next song. And, uh, and then we'll have the preaching of the Word of God today. Amen. Well, it's one of my favorite songs. I know we've done this one just recently, but oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. I can't think of a better time to be a child of God. And uh, so we're going to sing first and last verses together tonight. I know you don't have a book, but just follow along with us if you can. You know the chorus. Let's all sing together. Life has purpose now it never had before. There is meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ my Lord divine. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. Listen to the words on the last verse. And the hope of heaven's glory thrills me so. Where I live with Christ forevermore, I know. That is why the things of earth I loosely hold. I have eternal riches better far than gold. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. Amen. All right, get your Bibles out. Get your family together, uh, maybe you just by yourself, get your Bible out to together tonight and follow along in God's Word. I know Brother Randy will be a blessing. He's no stranger to Temple Baptist Church, and uh, we love him and, of course, his wife Pam, sweet, sweet people. And uh, so, Brother Randy, you come and preach to us. Take all the time you want. They'll turn you off when they get tired, brother, but uh, you take all the time you want, brother, and we love you, appreciate you. Well, good morning. I've just seen if you were awake yet, and uh, as Brother Josh said, put those recliners in the forward position now. Get rid of those potato chips and cheese doodles, and you can keep your Diet Mountain Dew or Pepsi there if you want to. But uh, it's good to see you tonight. You say, can you see me? Oh, yes. Yes, in my mind's eye, I can see where a lot of you sit in here. And, of course, uh, my wife, she'd be back there on the back row, and... Her and I were some of those back row Christians and uh, told them I was afraid to get too close to the front. I might get under conviction <laughs> and uh, have to come to the altar. But uh, I appreciate Brother Josh allowing me to come tonight. And uh, we are living in a different day and a lot of different things going on. But I appreciate him letting me come. I hate that he missed out on his trip. But uh, I think if you, uh, I think I heard this right in the uh, latest decree for the state of North Carolina if a pastor missed their vacation week, you doubled that uh, so that they could take two weeks when they do lift that. And Brother Josh didn't tell me to say that, but I just came to my mind. I thought, you know, that'd be, that'd be a good uh, bonus there, the uh, two-week vacation instead of one, when and if they ever lift 
uh, the stay at home. But uh, it's good to be here tonight, and I appreciate Brother Josh, Miss Hannah, good work, Brother Holly, uh, known him for a good while. And uh, and uh, so, Miss Christie, we appreciate all of them and the good work. If you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 16. I would say I won't keep you long, but it don't matter because if you get tired of me after 10 minutes, you can cut it off. and uh, Or 15 minutes or whatever, but I hope you'll stay with us longer than that. But uh, we'll try not to preach too long. If you're like me, as I get older, it seems like my attention span gets shorter. Or maybe it's just my mind uh, that's getting shorter. I don't know how much shorter it can get. But uh, I, I'll try not to be too long-winded tonight. But in Mark chapter 16, uh, we just come through the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, that's the thing that separates Christianity And if you'll allow me to use this term, from every other religion is the fact that we have a risen Savior. Nobody else can claim that from their leader because they're either in the grave or they're on their way to the grave. But uh, not our Savior, but here in Mark chapter 16, uh, the, 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 uh, the death, the trial, the death, the burial is passed. They hurriedly prepared the body of the Lord Jesus Christ because of Uh, the Sabbath day that was approaching. So in chapter 16, in verse 1, we begin and says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, that's the reason that the ladies were there. The men were still in the bed, amen, uh, waiting on breakfast in bed, but... Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. In other words, they went down to the place, the tomb, uh, where Jesus lay, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. It was a new tomb that had never been used by man. And boy, that's a whole other message, amen. There's There's a lot of things took place in that tomb, amen, that has never took place. Hey, that's the first tomb that ever held the body of a sinless man. Amen. There'd been a lot of good men placed in the tombs, but none like the man Jesus, amen, the God man. But they came to the sepulcher, in verse 3, they said among themselves, they were talking on the way down, they asked the question, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Uh, You remember Pilate said, make it as sure as you can. They did everything that man could do to keep Jesus inside the tomb. But they didn't know who they were dealing with, amen. They didn't know that they were dealing with God incarnate, that he had power over death, hell, and the grave. And so uh, they looked in verse 4, they saw the stone was rolled away. Verse 5, entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. I would have been too. Uh, I don't expect uh, once in a while, I, not often, I'll go over to where my mom and dad's buried and uh, just keep their grave site looking nice and maybe put some flowers on it. But if I ever go over there and there's a, a, a man sitting there in a long white garment, I may not get out of the vehicle. I may be affrighted just like these ladies were. But in verse 6, he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Amen. I'm not reading the uh, uh, Reader's Digest. I'm not reading the Farmer's Almanac tonight. I'm reading from the Word of God. Amen. And when they went down there to finish uh, and put the spices on and, and to finish burying him, they didn't need anything else. Amen. Because he was gone. He's not here. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. He's risen. Behold the place. Look, if you don't believe it, look where they laid him, past tense. They laid him there, but he was no longer there. Verse 7, he said, here's what you do. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, For they trembled and were amazed, neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. That's always amazed me, that they they probably, maybe they couldn't believe what they just saw. 
Maybe they thought it was a, a dream. Maybe they thought it was their imagination. Maybe they thought this is not possible that this could be happening. And you know, what's even more amazing, and I won't take time to read the rest of uh, the verses, but if you read on down, when they went back and told the disciples and told others, they didn't believe it either. They didn't believe it either. But, but uh, here in these verses, in verses 1 through 8, I want to make a few comments tonight and uh, hope it will be a blessing to us. And well, we need encouraging in this time, amen, and we need lifting up. Can I remind you tonight, there's no panic in heaven tonight, amen. There's never been any panic in heaven. They, hey, God's not sitting up there chewing on his fingernails and eating them off up to the elbow, figuring out, trying to figure out what he's going to do. No, he's still on the throne tonight, amen. He's still in charge, whether we believe it or not. But there's some things that I want to learn from these scriptures tonight, some things that I want to encourage you with and encourage myself with and that we can put into practical use. Number one is this. I see in these verses, first of all, there's a lot of times in life that we worry about things that God has already taken care of. Now, does anybody else out there tonight worry besides me? I see you raising your hand there in your living room tonight. And Brother Mays Jackson used to say, God bless you there. I see your hand in radio land. But hey, we all worry, don't we? we? We don't have to, but that's just our human nature that we worry about things. I worry about things. I've said this before. I used to think as I got older, life would get less complicated. I got bad news for you if you're young. It gets more complicated the older that you get. There, there becomes more things to worry about. There, there's more burdens that come in life. But a lot of times we worry unnecessarily about things God has already taken care of. Look back in verse 3. And they were worried on the way down there. They said, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? They thought, how? Well, what were they doing going down there if they thought they couldn't even get in? What, I mean, how did they think that they was going to accomplish this? And that's our logic sometimes, ain't it? We don't know how we're going to do it. We don't know what we're going to do, but we just go and plow right on anyway. But it said they were talking, said, who's going to get this stone away so that we can get in there and, and prepare the body of our Lord and Savior? But notice in verse 4, and when they looked, they saw what? That the stone was rolled away. Oh, it don't tell us how that it got rolled away, but I got a pretty good idea how that it got rolled away. I'm pretty sure God had a hand in that, amen. Hey, they worried unnecessarily all the way down there, worried about how they were going to get in the sepulcher, and when they got there, God had already taken care of it for them. Oh, there's, there's a lot of things we're worried about right now, amen. And a lot of things we worry about every day in normal times. I heard today we're going to have to get used to the new normal. Well, if it's a new normal, it ain't normal. Amen? It's a different, it's abnormal. My wife probably tells me some things that I'm abnormal. I said, no, I'm normal. Everybody else is abnormal, amen. I'm the only one that is normal, and I'm joking about that. But there's a lot of things we worry about. A lot of times we worry about the wicked, don't we? Those that are unsaved, and I'm not saying this from a, I'm better than them. Hey, without the grace of God, I am what I am by the grace of God, amen. If Paul could say, I'm the least, uh, then where does that leave me? Because he was the greatest Christian, in my opinion, that ever walked on the face of God's earth. He, his whole life was revolved around the Lord Jesus Christ and the work of Christ. But hey, sometimes we worry about the wicked, and it seems like they, they, that they're prospering and that they're doing better than the righteous and they can get by with anything. And, but, and, and I don't say this uh, in, in a mean way, but hey, can I tell you something? The wicked, their day is coming to an end. I, I, I think about uh, Psalm 73, a man named Asaph. If you've ever read that, that, that uh, he got discouraged, amen. He got to looking around at the world and saw, hey, in this time in which we're living in right now, it could be that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. 
That could be the very case. And there, there's a lot of people without a job tonight. And there's a lot of people struggling, trying to make ends meet. And they look around them and they see the wicked, those that, hey, I've not heard much about repentance in this time. I've not heard much about God. I've not heard much about, hey, all I've heard is we're Americans. We're going to overcome this. Hey, friend, we might and we might not. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't get over it. Amen. I pray that we do, but I wish the nation would turn back to God and repent of their sins, amen, and turn from their wicked ways and their evil ways and confess their sins. Hey, we as God's people need to get our heart right as well, amen, and walk with God and talk with God. Hey, we, we worry about the wicked. But can I remind you, their days are numbered. Oh, Psalm 37 says they're going to be cut down like the grass. But oh, Asaph in Psalm 73 said, I looked around me. I saw the wicked was prospering. They had no pains in their death. And he got down to where he said this, I've cleansed my heart in vain. He said, all that I'm doing is futile. Oh, but aren't you glad that wasn't the end of the story? Like old Paul, Paul Harvey used to say, and now the rest of the story. But thank God, one of these days, hey, we're going to get to meet back here, I believe. But when he, when he went into the sanctuary, amen, and he got in touch with God, amen, and got in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit of God, amen, begin to move on him. Hey, if we get our eyes off the world, hey, we're, we're the only ones that's got anything to celebrate tonight, amen, is those of us that are saved, born again. Quit looking at the wicked and worrying about that. Hey, we get to worry about the world system, don't we? Hey, this, this, this world system is driven by money, and money brings power. But I read in Revelation chapter 18, even just today, that one of these days uh, the rich are going to watch their money. Hey, we've seen a little bit of it, how fast and how quickly things can change and how much money can be lost in a moment's time. And one of these days Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed. The rich men are going to weep and howl as they watch their riches uh, go down the drain, so to speak, and they lose everything that they've got. We don't need to worry about the world system, God's got that taste. Hey, sometimes we worry about the way of life, don't we? Where's our food coming from? Where are we going? Well, if you look at my belly, you can tell I ain't hurting <laughs> for food. I think I weigh more than I've ever weighed in my life. I had to, I, when I had to go buy some new clothes to, just so I could have something to wear, I bought them a little bit big so I'd think I was losing weight. It works, hey, Amen. You put them on and say, man, these pants is loose. I'm losing weight. But hey, we wear about food and raiment. But I'm glad Matthew 6 is still in the word of God, amen. I'm glad that we're still, hey, God knows the very hairs on our head. He sees every sparrow that falls. And are we not more important than they? Hey, I learned from this. We worry about things God's already taken care of. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, Amen. Hey, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my... Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, amen. Yes. Thy rod and thy staff, he's still the same God, amen, today amen. as he was then. We worry about things God's already taken care of. Number two, I learned this. God's a God of second chances. Look down in verse 7. Go your way, tell his disciples, and what's the next two words? And Peter. Go tell his disciples, but especially I want you to tell Peter. If you go over in, in Luke, you'll see where uh, the Lord was telling Peter about his upcoming denial. Peter said, Lord, I won't deny you. I'll go with you to the end, even if I had to go to prison, even if I had to go to the chopping block, even if I had to die, I won't, I won't deny you. But it wasn't but just a few verses later, Brother Josh, that he was denying the Lord, and he denied him three times, uh, and the cock crew, and it says that he went out and he wept bitterly. Why? Because he did something that he never thought he would do. You know what? I guarantee if you've been saved very long, you've thought some things that you never thought you would think after you got saved. You've said some things that you never thought you would say 
after you got saved. Hey, you might have even done some things that you never thought you would do after you got saved. But you know what? When we got saved, we still got the Adamic nature. We still got that old sinful nature. Hey, sure, we're indwelt by the Spirit of God. Yes, we've been born again. Hey, but I'm going to tell you something. Our old nature is still capable of doing whatever. And we have to be on guard every moment and gird up our loins. But aren't you glad that God's a God of second chances? Oh, I'm so glad that God doesn't treat me the way I treat others sometimes. You know, I've said often sometimes we as good old independent Baptists, rather than extend a hand of mercy and love and restoration, we just bring them down to the altar and shoot them. Oh, I'm telling the truth. Oh, hey, I'm not saying it's all right to live in sin. Get out there and live as you would to do the things of the world. You won't do that long before the chastening hand of God will come upon you. But hey, we ought to pray for them. And ye which are spiritual, Galatians 6, 1, restore such a one. Amen. So I'm glad God's a God of second chances. Hey, he's that to the disobedient. You ever disobeyed anything? Oh, if you were breathing, you have. I was a little boy. I was... I know you can't believe this, Brother Josh, but I was mean as a snake, a striped snake. I stayed in more trouble. You know, it's just our nature. If you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to bust the gut trying to do it. And, and I was often disobedient. I'm not advocating that or encouraging it. But you know what? Even as children of God, sometimes we're disobedient to our Heavenly Father. But aren't you glad he's a God of second chances? Oh, Jonah, he was disobedient, wasn't he? God had to chastise him, put him in the belly of a whale. And we know he was a Baptist preacher because the whale got sick and threw up. <laughs> I can say that because I is one. But hey, he, he was disobedient. And what did God say? God came to him the second time, didn't he? said, look, go preach. And Nineveh had a great revival. You know what? We don't. And Jonah, he got mad about that. And we don't know what happened to him. That was the end. Jesus mentioned him, I think, in the book of Matthew. Talking about as Jonah was in the, in the belly of the well three days, so shall the Son of Man. Hey, but we really don't know what happened. There wasn't a lot said about him after he got bitter. But hey, he's a God of second chances to the disobedient. He's a God of second chances to the discouraged. Mary Magdalene, man, she was brokenhearted. She told the gardener, tell me, if you know where he's laid, tell me so I can go get him. He's, he's, a, God of, he's, he's a God of second chances to the disillusioned. Elijah thought he was the only one serving God. He said, Lord, there's nobody left but me. God said, oh, no. I've still got 7,000, amen, that have not bowed the knee to Baal. There in 1 Kings chapter 19, hey, don't think that we're the only one tonight. There's a lot of us around. But number two, God's a God of second chances. And we see that when he said, go and tell Peter. Number three, I learned this from these verses. God's true to his word. He says there in the latter part of verse 7, There shall you see him, notice these three words, as he said. Boy, there's a lot of stuff told on the news, isn't there? Oh, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff going being said on the news, not only in this time, but before and it will be after. Why, I bet you most of us tonight have even told a lie. Right? You say, preacher, I ain't never told a lie. You just did. Hey, we, we, but we can't always. Hey, sometimes we, uh, uh, we're providentially hindered. You know, we like to use that term, don't we? Blame, blame it on the Lord. Maybe we were providentially hindered about some things. But hey, you know what? God's not like that. If God said it, he's going to do it. Amen. His word shall not return unto him void. It shall accomplish that which it is sent forth to do. You say, well, what? How, how, what is he true to his word? He's true to his word about salvation. Amen. Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Amen. Let your mind go back to the day when you got saved by the grace of God, when you got born again. You say, preacher, what is salvation? That's when you're willing to place your faith and trust wholly in Jesus Christ and the precious blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary. Amen. That washed away past tense, all of our sins. Yeah. You say, preacher, you saying that your sins are forgiven? According, according to Colossians chapter 2, they are, amen. 
He's forgiven us. Of, I can't understand it. I can't explain it. Uh, but I sure can enjoy it, amen. I sure can enjoy it. But hey, he's true to his word about salvation. If we'll call on him, according to Romans, he'll save us, amen. Then he's true to his word about our security. I'm glad tonight I'm sealed into the day of redemption. Uh, G- Jesus said uh, o- over in 2 Timothy, turn, if you got your Bible sealed out there, get the grease off your fingers now, off them Lay's potato chips. So he won't. So he won't mess you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We over in Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one, in verse number twelve, I believe it is. Second Timothy chapter one. Paul writing to Timothy, verse twelve says, "For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed." and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. It don't depend on me. It don't depend on you. It don't depend on the stock market. It don't depend on the world. It don't depend on the the next uh, relief program. Hey, it depends on what Jesus has already done, and I'm glad tonight that I'm safe and secure and sealed into the day of full redemption when I get a new body. Amen. Isn't that going to be a blessing? And as I get older, man, I get more aches and pains, Brother Josh. Brother Josh hasn't got old yet. Brother Holly hasn't got old yet. They're getting there, though, amen. But, hey, as I get older, I, I mean, I just you have to take inventory before you get out of the bed. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Make sure before you stand up it ain't something missing, knocked off or creaking or, you know, a leg ain't buckled up or whatever and, and uh, I mean, it's coming to all of us. Sometimes my wife, Pam, uh, my, my sweet wife, she'll say, what in the world's happening to everybody? I said, we're getting old. Hey, man, we're getting old. Uh, is it Psalms that talks about the days of man being three score and ten? Perhaps if we live four score, it only adds to our sorrow. Woo! <laughs> That's something to look forward to, ain't it? In other words, if you live to be 80, it's going to be really bad. My mama said when she turned 80, it really went downhill after that. But uh, I think mine started at 50, Brother Josh, Brother Steve. I think at 50 is when it starts going down. But hey, I don't have to worry about my security. I'm saved forevermore. I'm kept by the power of God, sealed into the day of my redemption. Then we don't have to, we don't have to worry about him being true to his word about the second coming. He's coming. Read John 14. Hey, read it tonight. He's coming back. Jesus is coming. I don't know when he's coming, but I know that he is coming. I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't advise people trying to set a date. I don't believe he can set a date because no man knoweth the day, no man knoweth the hour, but all I know is he's coming, amen. Uh, The main thing is to be ready. Amen. The main thing is, are you ready? Because it could be tonight before we leave this building. Hey, it could be in the morning before you ever wake up and you say, oh, I'll get saved one of these days. I got some living. You may not have tomorrow. The main thing is that he is coming and that he shall descend and that you better be ready. You say, preacher, how to get ready? Do what I was talking about. Put your faith and trust in Christ. Amen. Amen. Lean wholly upon him. Then, in closing, let me mention number four, something else I can learn from these scriptures. He's already been where we're going. <laughs> Isn't that good? He's already been where we're going. In verse 7, it says, He goeth before you into Galilee. I'm glad we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with our infirmities, but was in all points like as, as we are tempted, tested. And he's there, and he ever liveth to make intercession. Therefore, we can come boldly. That mean, I don't mean arrogantly or in your face. That means confidently. We can come with confidence to the throne, as it tells us in Hebrews, and present our petitions and requests before the Lord. And he hears our prayers according to his will. But hey, he's walked through every valley we've been that we're going through or been through. He's been and he's experienced everything than more than we'll ever experience. We'll never have to go through the some of the things that Jesus went through, that he was beaten beyond recognition, that you couldn't even recognize him as a man. But I'm glad that according to Mark chapter 16, 
that we can take these things to heart and we can learn the, hey, we, we worry. Yes, we, you say, preacher, are you going to worry anymore? Yeah. I'm human, ain't I? Sure we will. But I'm glad there's, hey, we don't have to worry, amen. We don't have to worry. It's not a requirement. Because we worry about a lot. God's already taken care of it. He, he knows all, amen. He, he's all powerful. He's omniscient. Who hath, told, who hath counseled God, Isaiah said? Who's taught him anything, amen? Romans 11 says, hey, his ways are past finding out. He knows it all. And he knows what's before us. And he loves us and he'll help us. I appreciate you letting me preach tonight, Brother Josh. I hope I've encouraged your heart. Hey, put your faith and trust in him if you don't know him. Uh, you know, the only thing I regret about getting saved was I didn't get saved earlier than I did. I was 21 years old when I got gloriously born again and birthed into the family of God. My only regret is that I didn't do it before then. Hey, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Yeah, man. It could be. Hey, it could be that we won't even have to wait on the next decree. And the next stay at home. I know some of y'all about ready to kill you youngins. Amen. Some of y'all about ready to kill your husbands. Some of y'all about ready to kill your wives. One, one, somebody asked a preacher's wife one time, said, you ever thought about divorce? She said, no, but I have thought about murder. <laughs> maybe, you thought, <laughs> maybe you thought about murder the last few weeks. But hey, look up. Tonight could be the night. Tomorrow could be the day. If not tomorrow, the next day, amen. Get up and look for him every day. We need to look for his appearing. Father, thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for the things we can learn from thy word. I pray that you take your word and, and help us to hide it in our hearts, God, that it might encourage us in the days to come, knowing that you're there for us. You've been through everything we'll ever go through and that we don't have to worry. You've already taken care of all of these things in our lives. We know, Romans eight twenty eight. all things work together for good to them that love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Help us to lean on these promises of God now. Bless Brother Josh. Bless his ministry here, Lord, and everything that uh, goes on here at Temple Baptist Church. Bless the services coming up on Sunday, Lord, I pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Josh. Amen. All right. And I trust that that was a blessing to you tonight. I'm sure it was. And I know that it was a blessing to me. That's something that we all can use. Because we all worry. That's, that's, as Brother Randy said a while ago, that's a human nature. And uh, so we're, and we're going to worry some more. Um, but I'm thankful we have some help with that. And uh, we don't have to do that. So I'm thankful for that. If you have a need, if you have anything in your life, any need or anything, salvation, uh, anything that we can help you with, you know, let us know. Uh, and we'll help you with anything we can. I love you, church. I want to thank you again for tuning in tonight. And I know that it was a blessing to you. If it was, just let us know that through Facebook, and uh, we'll get that. All right, if you need anything this week, call us or text us, let us know, and uh, we'll help you with anything. All right, don't forget about the services on Sunday, our drive-in, online, calling in, and uh, watching that. We'll do another call them all, Lord willing, again on Friday or Saturday. Love you, church. God bless you. And we are dismissed tonight.